School of Lancaster and I hope everyone is well the Sun is shining outside and it's it's actually gotten quite warm which is always really nice and so after this video I'm gonna go outside and play with my goats today I wanted to talk to you about geography I brought this from the classroom is our continent globe. So globe we know is a model of our world and this globe shows us each continent by different colors and so I thought maybe the first thing we could do is sing the continent song. So here's our continent, North America, okay? North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, don't forget Australia, don't forget Antarctica, tell me the continents, tell me the continents, tell me if you can. So we, in the month of March at school, started talking about the continent of Europe. And on our continent globe, it is red. And today I wanted to read a book that comes from the country of Sweden. So I printed out a map, since I don't have my puzzle maps here at home. I hope you can see that. I printed a map of Europe and Sweden it's way up here. It's sort of a long, skinny country. And so up here, this would be the top of the world, the Arctic, where it's very cold. So you can see that Sweden, especially up here, it's kind of up towards where it's cold a lot. And so it might take a longer time for them to have springtime than it does for us. So it's cold for a lot of the year there. So spring is really important to them. And actually, I also show, wanted to show you, I brought the flag of Sweden, because I know you guys always love the flags. So here's the flag of Sweden. Maybe you can try and draw one at home. It's just got two colors, blue and yellow, and a cross in the middle. So that's the Swedish flag. And in Sweden, they have a story of a little man called the Tompton. And so here's the book that I have about the Tompton, and it's a little bit long, there you can see him, but he kind of helps them think about when spring is coming and what happens in the winter and taking care of things in the winter. So I'm gonna read this to you, and I hope you enjoy it, and the pictures are really pretty. So I think what I might do is put the words this way and hold up the picture for you. It is dead of night. The old farm lies fast asleep and everyone inside the house is sleeping too. The farm is deep in the middle of a forest. Once upon a time, someone came here, cut down trees, built a homestead and farmed the land. No one knows who. The stars are shining in the sky tonight. The snow lies white all around. The frost is cruel. On such a night, people creep into their small houses, wrap themselves up and bank the fire on the hearth. Here is a lonely old farm where everyone is sleeping. Everyone but one. The Tompton is awake. He lives in a corner of the hayloft and comes out at night when human beings are asleep. He is an old, old Tompton who has seen the snow of many hundreds of winters. No one knows when he came to the farm. No one has ever seen him, but they know he is there. Sometimes when they wake up, they see the prints of his feet in the snow. 
but no one has seen the Tomtom. On small, silent feet, the Tomtom moves about in the moonlight. He peeps into cowshed and stable, storehouse and tool shed. He goes between the buildings, making tracks in the snow. The Tompton goes first into the cow shed. The cows are dreaming that summer is here and they are grazing in the fields. The Tompton talks to them in Tompton language, a silent little language the cows can understand. Winters come and winters go, summers come and summers go. Soon you can graze in the field. The moon is shining into the stable. There stands Dobbin thinking. Perhaps he remembers a clover field where he trotted around last summer. The Tompton talks to him in Tompton language, a silent little language a horse can understand. Winters come and winters go. Summers come and summers go. Soon you will be in your clover field. Now all the sheep and lambs are sleeping soundly, but they bleat softly when the Tompton peeps in at the door. He talks to them in Tompton language, a silent little language the sheep can understand. All my sheep, all my lambs, the night is cold, but your wool is warm and you have aspen leaves to eat. Then on silent small feet, the Tompton goes to the chicken house and the chickens cluck contentedly when he comes. He talks to them in Tompton language, a silent little language chickens can understand. Lay me an egg, my jolly chickens, and I will give you corn to eat. The dog kennel roof is white with snow and inside is caro. Every night he waits for the moment where the Tompton will come. The Tompton is his friend and he talks to Caro in Tompton language, a silent little language a dog can understand. Caro, my friend, is it cold tonight? Are you cold in your kennel? I'll fetch more straw and then you can sleep. The house where people live is silent. They are sleeping through the winter night without knowing the Tompton is there. Winters come and winters go. I have seen people large and small, but never have they seen me, thinks the Tompton. He tiptoes across to the children's cot and stands looking for a long time. If they would only wake up, then I could talk to them in Tompton language, a silent little language children can understand, but children sleep at night. And away goes the Tompton on his little feet. In the morning, the children see his tracks, a line of tiny footprints in the snow. Then the Tompton goes back to his cozy little corner in the hayloft. There in the hay, the cat is waiting for him, for she wants milk. The Tompton talks to the cat in Tompton language, a silent little language a cat can understand. Of course you may stay with me, and of course I will give you milk says the Tompton. Winter is long and dark and cold and sometimes the Tompton dreams of summer. Winters come and winters go, summers come and summers go. Soon the swallows will be here, thinks the Tompton. But the snow still lies in deep drifts around the old farm in the forest. The stars shine in the sky, it is biting cold. On such a night, people creep into their small houses and bank the fire on the hearth. Here is a lonely old farm where everyone is fast asleep. All but one. Winters come and winters go, year follow year, but as long as people live at the old farm, in the forest, every night the Tompton will trip around between the house on his small, silent feet. You can see his footprints. And I forgot to tell you, this book was written and illustrated by this woman, Astrid Lind 
Lindgren, Astrid Lindgren, and she is from Sweden, where this story comes from. And so I always like to think about the Tompton because he's so kind to all the animals, and we always love to take care of our animals in the classroom and here at home. And so today I thought I would show you some ideas about how you can make your own Tompton. So I kind of have a couple different ideas. The first thing I did is I went outside and I got a stick from my yard. And what I did is I, I looked at some different sticks. I picked one that was a little bit thicker and I started peeling off the bark of the one end. And the one end was where I broke it was kind of pointy. And so what I did is I just took some paint after I kind of dried it off and I have two colors, red and white and my paint brushes and all I did was I kind of painted what I thought the little Tompton would look like and I didn't even fill in his face necessarily I gave him white I hope you can see that white right here for his beard and a red hat and you can kind of see how the stick broke kind of pointy so it kind of made his hat and if I wanted to I could give him some eyes there but I didn't want to. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a place in my yard and I'm gonna stick him in my yard. And maybe I'll find some more and make some other ones. And he'll be like a decoration in front of my house. So maybe you can do that at your house. Or maybe you have one of these things at your house. Today I ate a popsicle. It was stuck on like this. And when I got to the bottom, I thought, hmm, maybe I'll save that. That's a different kind of popsicle stick. It kind of looks like a person to me. So I thought maybe I could use that to make my Tompton. And I knew that I have these things. I have cotton balls. And I also have some scraps of felt at my house. Sometimes I cut the felt that we use for sewing at school and I keep the scraps. So maybe what I might do is, and I have some of this, this is sort of a different kind of um, glue. Let's see if I can open it. So if I take my glue, and maybe you have glue at your house that's, I didn't have any regular glue. Um, and I'm gonna take my, my, my cotton ball and just kind of pull it apart a little bit. And maybe I'll, some of the times Tompsons have really big beards. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of do this. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take my Q-tip in my glue and I'm just gonna put a lot of glue all the way around around here and down 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 around 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 and down around and down right there we go because if you don't have enough glue it doesn't stick and I'm just gonna take this right on top and I'm just gonna kind of stick it to my popsicle stick there we go. You can see the beard even covers up where his feet would be. I'm giving him a super long beard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of felt. And I have, these are my sewing scissors. I like to use them. And I'm going to give him some kind of pointy hat. So I'm going to just kind of make his hat look like a triangle. Right? And there it is. That's all I need. And I'm actually just going to put some glue on the bottom part of the hat just like that, glue it on the bottom part. And we'll see how much I need. For right now, I'll just do that much. And then I'm gonna find my popsicle stick, there he is. And I'm gonna just put my hat right on the top. And I might even turn it or make it go to the back a little bit. And I might need more glue. And then I gotta find his face. I'm gonna give a little, make a little hole there for his face. And oops, his hat's gonna stop to stay on. I might need to hold it down a little bit more. But that's another way. And I could take a marker and I could get make him a face and maybe move his beard a little bit. And then there you can see I have my own little Tompton toy that once the glue's dry, I can play with. Let's see if I can get him to look a little bit better for you. Whoops, his hat keeps falling off. He needs a little more glue. So that's another way that you can do it. And I think we made these last year at school. Maybe we used googly eyes because that's a lot of fun. Okay, so there's my Tompton. I'll have to let him dry. And then there was one more thing I had at home that I bet you have is this, a toilet paper roll. And 
I'm not going to show you how to do it, but I bet you could try and make a Tompton out of this too. Maybe you want to draw a picture of him, draw his face. You can even draw his, his body on here. You could maybe feel construction paper. You could use that for a hat that might glue down a little bit better um, and give him a beard. And then you could sit him around somewhere in your house. And maybe you could even make some animals that he's taking care of and make a whole scene. And if you don't have some of these things, you can always draw a picture, right, of the Tompton. So we can remember that the Tompton story comes from Europe, from the country called Sweden. And here's where Sweden is again, way up at the top of Europe, at the top, towards the top of the world, to the north, north part of the world. Okay. So even though it's really beautiful and warm today, that was sort of a wintry story, but I really like it and I wanted to share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time on my next video. Have a great day.